Hi, I'm Mark Weissman. Welcome back to our derivation of the Feynman Heaviside formula, which I've kept up here like this. Last time we derived the um, Leonard Weichart potentials, which we're actually not going to use, but we're going to use an intermediate result. I've left that up here as well. So we've done Maxwell's equations, retarded time variables, Leonard Weichart potentials. I want to now derive a form of the Leonard Weichart fields and then on our way to the final formula. So using um, the standard electromagnetism, E equal minus del phi minus the partial of A with respect to T. Um, and substituting in formulas that we had derived earlier, we'll get this formula for E. E equal minus Q four pi epsilon naught, the gradient of the integral of dt prime, delta function, t prime minus t plus the distance, the retarded distance to the charge over c divided by r of t prime. That's the this part over here. And then minus mu zero q over four pi partial with respect to t of the integral of dt prime the velocity, the retarded velocity of the charged particle same delta function over R of T prime. So we use these forms for phi and A to derive the uh, Leonid Weichar potentials. Um, now we're going to do a similar derivation for the fields. So let me, um, let me just observe some basic things like the gradient of um, R of T prime. So, well, let's just make it R of T. By definition, this is just the gradient of the absolute value of R minus R zero T. R is the observation point where we're computing the fields. R zero is the um, the uh, position of the charged. And so, um, you know, just if you just write it out, this is equal to the gradient of the square root of x minus x zero squared plus y minus y zero squared plus z minus z zero squared and then you just do that calculation, you know, you're going to get, I'm doing this, I usually wouldn't show this much detail, but I will. This is a unit vector in the x directions times x minus x zero plus the same thing in the y and the z directions. And then you would have over the square root, same thing in the denominator. And this just ends up being r minus r zero at t um, divided by the magnitude r minus r zero t which is just equal to what we've been calling or I'm just going to define this as the unit vector n caret and, and it's toward the um, field point if you remember, we had a picture like this. This was R0. This was our field point R. So this would be R minus R0. 
and this would be like this a unit vector would be n caret like that okay um, using the same let me erase these potentials we don't really need them using the same methodology the gradient of 1 over r as you, I'm sure you all know, is minus r over r cubed. This is equal to minus n caret over r squared. Okay. So, what we have to evaluate is the gradient of this delta function and the partial derivative of this whole thing here. So let's get started. Delta, delta, this is the tricky part in the whole thing, at least as done in the uh, Modern Electrodynamics book by Zangwill. Okay, so first thing we do is we just take the derivative of the delta function with respect to its argument, which I'll denote as del prime. Okay, and then we multiply the gradient of this argument. This doesn't have any positional dependence. Neither of these have any positional dependence. So it's just the gradient R of T prime over C. We know what this is because we worked that out over there. So this is equal to minus the partial with respect to t. I'll explain where that comes from. Times the delta function t prime minus t plus r of t prime over c. In other words, instead of just taking the derivative of this delta function with respect to the argument, we can take the derivative with respect to that, it's the same thing, and put a minus sign. And then we'll get n caret t prime, because we're doing the gradient of r of t prime, not r of t over c. So if we substitute these results into our formula for E, we're going to get the following. E of r comma t is equal to q four pi epsilon naught our first term will be the integral dt prime delta t prime minus t Oops. Plus R of T prime over C, that delta function. Now we'll have our n caret T prime, because we're substituting for the gradient in here, which is just n caret. We take the gradient in this term over here. Remember, it's only the position that's getting differentiated n caret t prime divided by r of t prime squared plus the partial with respect to t. I'm, I'm sort of combining several steps because I'm taking, when I take the gradient, it's like, you know, usual calculus with the numerator over the denominator, and I'm combining part of this into here and keeping the part there. So this is the part that comes from differentiating the denominator plus the partial with respect to t. Now this combines the second part of this, both terms. We have our delta function.
Now we get two terms, one that was a carryover from the first term and the other one the second term. We're going to get n caret over c r of t prime minus beta. I'm taking one of the c's and making a v, meet v to beta, beta of t prime over c r of t prime and that just closes everything so you can verify this equation for yourself and um, like I said I combined a couple of steps and I moved one term over there um, I'm not going to bother with the uh, the magnetic field um, but these integrals are the same ones that we did in the um, Leonard Weichardt evaluation and we evaluate them exactly the same way so from this equation if you go back to the Leonard Weichardt we'll end up getting the fields using the same sort of evaluation and we're going to get our final formula for the electric field Now we'll have our n caret over g r squared, and this is all evaluated at the retarded time, just like in the Leonid Weichardt thing, and plus q over 4 pi epsilon 0 ddt. N caret minus beta over G CR, all evaluated at the retarded time. Um, remember, G was defined as uh, 1 minus beta dot N caret evaluated at the retarded time. And then the, um, the magnetic field B is gotten in the same way. It's a very similar calculation and I'll write it mu zero Q over 4 pi. That's going to be V caret, the velocity cross N caret over G R squared retarded plus mu zero Q over 4 pi DDT V caret cross N over G C R retarded. So these are the fields from a moving charged particle and they seem pretty complicated and I guess that's why Feynman worked out, originally worked out his formula. It's a little bit easier to apply and what we're going to do is from this we're going to derive what's on top over there. So I'll see you in the next videos. Thank you very much.